What's going on, Ice Follard? Zach Long here, uh, lead faculty for the Clinical Management and Fitness Athlete Advanced Concepts course, where I teach that alongside Mitch Babcock. Today on Ice Live, we are on the best day of the week, in my opinion, of course, not that I'm biased, and that is Fitness Athlete Friday. And we're going to talk a little bit today on the topic of back friendly leg strength exercises. So something that's really important to us as faculty in the clinical management of the fitness athlete course is helping our athletes stay as active as possible when they are rehabbing from an injury. Uh, crossfitters, powerlifters, Olympic lifters, they don't like being told to completely shut everything down and rest, nor do we feel that in the majority of injuries that we need to have athletes completely rest from loading. Um, so it's something that we spend a lot of time on talking about in the advanced concepts course, we actually spend two entire weeks talking about modifications that we can make to an individual's program to allow them to stay active when they're injured. And uh, we think this is important for us from a business model as well, because if we can keep athletes in the gym, they're going to be happier. They're going to refer friends to us. And also, when you go market to the gym down the street, you can use this as, as kind of a leverage tool. And look, when your guys get injured, and they come see me, I'm gonna give them modifications that they can do to their programming so that they can stay in your gym. Because one problem a lot of CrossFit gyms have, for example, is with their $150 to $200 membership fees, if somebody's hurt and they, and they know that it's an injury significant enough that maybe for a month or two months, they're not gonna be going 100%, a lot of times they're gonna pause their membership or cancel their membership. And a lot of times, even if they just pause it, they may never go back to that gym. And so from a small, CrossFit business owner's perspective, they don't want their members pausing or canceling their membership. So if you can do stuff that keeps their athletes in the gym even when they're hurt, that business owner is going to appreciate you a lot more and also become a referral source for you. So today, we're going to focus on, on somebody with a back injury and some different modifications that we can make to their programming to help them stay active, uh, some back-friendly leg strength exercises. Uh, the, the first big important concept to understand when we're dealing with the back injury is a lot of times different squat variations will not irritate a back as much as others. For example, if we look at a back squat compared to a front squat, we have much different torso positions. With a back squat, we're typically going to have a more forward inclined torso, and with a front squat or overhead squat, a more vertical torso. And at times, that will lead to athletes being able to perform one of those variations versus the other. So sometimes athletes that are less tolerant to shear forces in the spine will, uh, if they're less tolerant to shear, then they would do better with compressive forces that you might see in a front squat. If they're less tolerant of those compressive forces, they may better tolerate a back squat where you're dealing with more shear rather than compressive forces. Now, obviously there are times where athletes won't tolerate either of those variations, a front or a back squat, and you need to go and completely unload the spine. And with that, uh, an amazing tool to use is the belt squat, where you have an athlete stand in between two boxes, so their legs are spread while they're up on the box, and they're wearing a dip belt or a belt squat belt, and they have weights hanging from that belt. So the weight's all at their hips and below, so the spine is not loaded at all by that weight, and then they squat. So it's a really, really intense leg workout with very little stress on the uh, entire spine which obviously makes it a great exercise to use when somebody's dealing with a significant back injury where they can't load the spine at all. From a performance perspective, that's also a great exercise to give athletes. If you notice with the way that they move, this is again something we'll cover a lot in our fitness athlete courses, if you notice the way that they move, they have maybe a stronger back relative to their leg strength, and this athlete from a performance perspective needs to bring up their leg strength, this is a great way for you to come in and be more than just their, their injury rehab expert, to, but to be somebody that's going to actually help them with their sports performance as well. And you can prescribe them to do some belt squats as part of their performance programming to help them uh, bring up that weak point in their, in their squat work. Um, some other variations to talk about. Uh, split squats. So basically doing essentially what a lunge is. So you're going to keep legs spread apart and just go up and down into that split squat or rear foot elevated split squats are two variations that because they're way more unilateral in loading, they're not completely unilateral, 
Um, it's going to allow you to use a lot less weight when you're doing this squat variation and still get a significant leg workout. And you can do that with uh, barbell in the back, barbell in the front rack, dumbbells or kettlebells at the side, or dumbbells and kettlebells offset for a little challenge to, to the, the lateral trunk musculature. Uh, another thing that, that's really, really well tolerated a lot of times in athletes dealing with back pain is sled work. Whether that's sled pushes, sled pulls, drags, uh, etc. Doesn't seem to threaten the back as much as a lot of other variations, even though there is uh, some significant loading going through the spine there. Uh, much less uh, or, or no really big eccentric muscular contractions happening there, so a lot less muscle breakdown, a lot less soreness. So a lot of times sled work will be very, very well tolerated. Two other, two other uh, uh, techniques we'll talk about. We're going to talk about eccentric isometrics and speed work. Um, if you follow my personal website, thebarbellphysio.com, you'll know that I'm absolutely crazy about eccentric isometrics. I think they're a fantastic tool to have in your arsenal to help athletes improve their mobility, improve their motor control, strength, and hypertrophy. What are eccentric isometrics? That's where we do a slow eccentric contraction. So say we're doing a squat, we do a, a five to seven second eccentric, a three to five second pause, and then we explode out of the hole really rapidly. So obviously with that incredibly slow tempo, we're probably not going to be lifting the same weights that we would be lifting at heavy loads. So that means that, that maybe with only 50% of an individual's one rep max, they can do five sets of three and get an absolutely killer workout even though they haven't put a significant amount of load on their spine, making it uh, a much better tolerated. Again, that, that slow eccentric, that pause in the bottom, is also a great tool to use in, the, in a rehab setting because it's going to really help athletes own positions and improve their mobility really, really rapidly. Um, for a lot of crossfitters and Olympic weightlifters who are really used to rapid muscle contraction and never actually slowing down and controlling their movement, having them spend a block of time where they do eccentric isometrics and they learn to control the bottom positions is actually going to be incredibly good from longevity of their, their career perspectives. I see a lot of Olympic lifters that I work with that have very, very little control in the bottom of their squat and that makes eccentric isometrics a great tool to go to from a both back friendly leg strength perspective and from a uh, uh, performance perspective, staying healthy perspective. The last thing we'll talk about for, for back friendly leg strength is, is doing speed work. So we drop the weight down and rather than focus on focusing on lifting maximal weight, we focus on the rate of force development. So we use weights anywhere from 50 to maybe 75% of an individual's one rep max, so we're decreasing that load and we're working on performing the repetitions as fast as possible. So kind of the opposite of eccentric isometrics, we're trying to get from, from no force development to maximal force development as fast as possible Again, taking the weight down a lot of times will make this way more tolerated. Um, I find with a lot of athletes that when you actually work on speed work and you're, and you're making little subtle changes to their technique, they can feel really rapidly whether that change in their technique is actually good from a performance perspective because they can really notice that change in barbell speed pretty rapidly. But again, um, there are one, two, three, four, five, six different versions or variations of exercises that you can use with your athletes when they're dealing with back pain to keep them healthy in the gym so that they're happy as an athlete, their coaches and, and the business owners for the gyms that they go to are happy that their clients are staying in there. I hope that's helpful. I'll take a look and see if there's any questions and answer those if there are.